This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about Q de Ufavre from 1947, Ooh, nice. directed by Henri Georges Clouseau. That's the only time I'm going to say the title. I'm just going to say this film. You'll notice. I'm this bringing film? attention to it. Okay. The synopsis for this film, RJ. Mm-hmm. Jenny Lamour sings in a music hall in post-war Paris, accompanied by her husband, Maurice Martineau, on piano. When Martineau notices his wife flirting with an older businessman named Georges Brignon, Brignon? He, follows, Brignon, he follows her to Brignon's house with the intent to kill him. At the house, Brignon is found murdered, but by someone else. Inspector Antoine conducts an investigation that implicates Martineau, whose planned alibi comes loose. So, RJ, uh, yeah. what do these, the title of this movie, what does it mean? Uh, I, I never even looked it up. I have, never, never occurred, You can tell huh? me anything. Well, you, RJ, I, uh, I, I looked it up for you. Yes. So, if you just, like, copy and paste this, like, right into uh, French to English translation on Google, mm-hmm. it says, headquarters. And I'm like, no, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. And then yeah. I uh, <clears throat> I checked it out, uh, Wikipedia, and then I broke the words down bit by bit into, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh, it's like Goldsmith's Quay? <laughs> that makes even less sense, Jared. Indeed. Goldsmith's Quay? Yeah. Or Way? Quay, as in Dock. Goldsmith's Dock? Yeah, Goldsmith's Dock. You know, just like... Like a boat dock or like a dock like, doctor? Like like a boat dock. None of those things exist in this movie. Nope. I don't think you see any water if, in this film. If you, if you called this movie Malaria Malaria Boy, that would be more fitting and more accurate to what the movie is than Goldsmith's dock. So um, yes. this is a movie that I would probably say is underseen in the Criterion Collection. Um, uh, yeah. It doesn't have – it's kind of like the same boat as last week's movie mm-hmm. where – uh, you know, coup de grace. It's uh, another one of these French titles. And, coup de grace. Yeah, but uh, and uh, by I mean Henry Clouseau isn't kind of a name director. I mean he directed that Wages mm. of Fear. He directed mm-hmm. that Les Diaboliques. Uh, mm-hmm. One day we'll be talking about Les Corbeaux, but today oh. we're talking about this year number Q de ou Favre. So uh, I'd never seen this movie before, like many people. Mm-hmm. And it's no longer in the well. It's in the Criterion Collection, but it's not on the Criterion Channel, so you got to find it by other means. Mm-hmm. It's out there. You you can check it out. Um, so yeah, I went into this pretty blind. I had I didn't even look up a synopsis. I I did wow. see some mention that it was like a crime t- type of movie, and mm-hmm. I was like, okay. And it starts out, and it's a bunch of these ladies. They're going up to uh, this office to get booked. To get mm-hmm. to get into the uh, the show, and you're like, what kind of show is this? And then RJ, this movie yes. just starts flying. We're just transitioning in and out of scenes, and I'm just like, yeah. what the fuck? Like, this is 1947. This movie's uh-huh. so smooth. It's just like we're, mm-hmm. we're flying through time, and it's just like, boom, this happens. Boom, hey, now she's moved along. Hey, now she's at another phase in her life and her career. <laughs> boom, and it's just like, wow, this is amazing. It's mm-hmm. it's so slick. I, I'm not used to this kind of pacing in my movies doing this mm-hmm. show week to week. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is the uh, the editing is uh, quite nice. I agree completely. I, I, I was like, one of my notes was, wow, smooth edits, baby. Because there, there, there are a few, too, where it's just like from one one setting to another, and it's pretty seamless. And it's like, I think this movie gave its audience a little bit of credit, and I was like, you'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. You're 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 grown up adult or maybe not, but you're smart people. You you can figure this out, and I appreciated that. You're not big dum dums. No, you're not the uh, the Superman crowd. Yeah. So uh, yeah, like I I agree. I thought this movie had pretty pretty nice edits. Yeah. So uh, what's this movie got going for it? So it's about Question. this it's about this couple. They're in mm-hmm. they're in show business, kind of in that cabaret kind of thing. She's mm-hmm. uh you know she's making with the cleavage. She's uh putting it out <laughs> the dis- what the, the cleavage. She's putting okay. on display. Sure. She does these little like butt dances, thrusting them mm-hmm. out, and uh, all the people they're uh, very much into it. They're doing the mm-hmm. like, kind of like you know lowering the glasses to get a better view. <laughs> yeah. Because they don't be obstructed by the clear lenses on their face. Mm-hmm. You know how it is as a man I who do. doesn't wear some uh, any form of facial eyepiece. I've been to pornos before, though. Oh, okay. I know what's going on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's like these little touches of like how they're in love, 
and like they'll never betray one another. But y'all, y'all know when they're saying that stuff, it's all mm-hmm. going to go downhill from there. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, she's getting attention of more and more men, more successful men. Uh-huh. Uh, and then there's this storyline that's going on with her friend, who is the photographer for this outfit. And okay. I, I think that it's really interesting that this is like a pretty blatant, like, lesbian story that's like there, but they're mm-hmm. so smooth with how they present it because it's like, no, I really love your husband. <laughs> it's like, no, you don't. <laughs> Wait a minute. I think you're talking about someone else. I think you might be talking about her. Oh my goodness. <gasps> so yeah, oh uh, I mean, this is France. This isn't America, the, the Puritan capital mm-hmm. of the world. This is France, but they're still like playing it subtle because th- th- they also, again, much like with the, the smooth edits of this movie, they figure the audiences are smart enough to figure this stuff out. And they kind of even like leave it to like, well, maybe she's kind of like just really likes them both, you know? And you're yeah. like, but it's like, no, she's not, she's not going back to a murder scene to get uh, anybody's uh, fur coat. Not just, not just anyone. Not just anybody's. Mm-hmm. So that I thought was like a pretty well done. Mm-hmm. So on the whole, RJ. I yes. like this movie quite a bit. It's, nice. It's a, it's a, it's nice. a nice. It's a nice piece of filmmaking. Uh, mm-hmm. I was. I would say though that I think it, the story loses me in that last half hour when it starts getting okay. into the uh, this this heist, this like robbery stuff, where yeah. like, it, it's, it feels very contrived and convoluted. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of movies from this era that were doing similar things have this same idea of like creating these characters. I mean, okay. So there's actually a lot, some similarities between this and Led by Leak, Die, Die by Leak, for mm-hmm. me, um, where you kind of also have this like, uh, kind of homoerotic kind of relationship between two women and a man, mm-hmm. who's like kind of on the outside of that. But in this one, though, it's like they are pretty well actively working to kill this guy and free her and so they can live their lives it's very similar kind of thing but this is more for this is like a almost a jokey crime movie a where, little bit yeah. yeah where it's like because it's like it's a very natural progression to work because like you're watching maybe the first i don't know 20 minutes half hour and it feels like this kind of uh jaunty kind of behind the scenes kind of comedy it reminded me of a uh, children of paradise where we're getting like the behind yeah. the scenes of uh this carnival act and this troupe that are mm-hmm. performing every night. And then you start getting the jealousy stuff. And then I'm like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, there, there's this, this is the crime stuff where he's getting jealous, but, and they're building to it. And the way they kind of don't explain what um, Maurice is doing when he's going to the dance hall that night when she's out of town mm-hmm. or he thinks she's out of town uh, or no, she's, he, yeah his suspicions and he's going to do yeah. something about this, yeah. uh, this son of a bitch, this Brig Brignon <laughs> guy. And mm-hmm. he just goes to the music hall and he he goes to pay his ticket and they're like, Oh yeah, you can sit here. Oh no, no, I'll, I'll stand. I'll stand. Uh, yeah. I'll want we'll to check my hat and my coat. And then I, don't know, I was around there. I went, Oh man. Yeah. He's, he's setting up his alibi. That's, <laughs> that's, but it's really good. Like, cause they're not, oh, I have to set up an alibi now. And looks mm-hmm. at the camera and then everything's very, you know, exactly. <laughs> I need where it to was. cover my tracks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that stuff is like so great. And then there's like just like great camera work uh, involving mirrors in the dance hall where mm-hmm. he's walking around and you see the back mm-hmm. of all these men who are all their attention and with their hats and their coats are all toward the stage. And you're yep. never like focusing in on what's happening on the stage. It's always like a background element, which is really neat. Mm-hmm. Uh, I appreciate the uh, maturity of the filmmaking. Right. Um, and so the whole movie sets up essentially... Uh, Maurice coming into the Brennan's house and finding him dead. And he's like, oh my God, he's been murdered. And <laughs> I, I was going to come here and murder him myself. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's like, hold it. it's like played, it's not played funny, but it is, it's comical, right? You're like, oh, what a turn of events. Oh shit, now I got to worry about getting away with it. And it's like, yeah. oh my God, that car just got stolen. Oh, and I had to run all the way back. Yeah, and like it's kind of like you said, it's it's kind of like a, it's not. I didn't find that it was played like, would be played for laughs. It is funny, but it also was kind of just like, like it's funny that it's happening to this guy. But 
the way it kind of played out to me, it was just like, what are you going to do, man? It's like, this dude's having a bad day. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, and so eventually we're then introduced uh, very offhandedly to Inspector Antoine. Yes. He's this man that we haven't seen for the, like the whole first bit of the movie. Mm-hmm. And suddenly he's waking up, his son or daughter, his child, uh, uh, is sleeping. Son, I, I think they call him a boy a couple times. I think times. so. Like, I think you're right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Or a lad. The, lad. Yeah, the boy. Mm-hmm. So uh, he's like kind of a dad mm-hmm. and uh, he just like he seems like that kind of world wary, beaten down by the world cop who's like seen everything and uh, is very casual about everything. He's not like, mm-hmm. I'm a different kind of cop. He's not that kind of cop. He's just like, no. oh boy, got to catch another one of these buggers, huh? Mm-hmm. So we see him do the Columbo thing where information is constantly being collected. And you're like, mm-hmm. man, I, I would, I shouldn't ever commit a crime because they make it look so easy. They're just going to get you. Mm-hmm. They, they just, they close in. So there's the whole process of, you know, Martino thinks he, like he knows he's not guilty, but he knows he's a sus, he's going to be a suspect. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Jenny Lamore, which uh, was the American title of the movie. Uh, what is when it, when it was released at the time? Is that one of the characters' names? That yeah, that's. Uh, well, I remember Lamore. Yeah, but... that's that's uh, his. That's the wife. That's the okay. Yeah, I mean that that title's fine, yeah. but so it's all whatever. about alibis and alibis being exposed, and then it takes this turn, which is kind of where it loses me, where mm-hmm. it's like there's this other heist, and like he's a a witness to it. And so maybe it's okay for him to kill somebody. And it all just kind of ties itself up in a nice little knot. Right. And it's probably the less engaging part of the story for me, but, uh, the road along the way, I thought this was uh, quite a solid movie, RJ. A solid film. You would say? Yeah. What would you call this film? I would call it alibi. Alibi I was, or qu- question mark with the characters yeah. on the poster with like red letters above them and their heads like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. And it just say smart Alec, all Guinness. With the detective uh, with the magnifying glass. Yeah. Look, looking Alibi? Over them all. Hmm. Played by Walter Matthau. That's the route I would have That's why you're it, a but. podcaster, RJ. Uh, I, yeah, but of a professional podcast, which is universally accepted as the only, the one the global phenom criterion collection podcast. So healthy, healthy or sick. We we're here every week. We're here. Where, where's all those other ones failed and dead, I guess. Exactly. Not the people, but you know, the pods. So RJ, what uh, do you think of this number? Oh, oh, I, I got distracted for a second there. Um, let me try to say it once just cause I know fans like the way I pronounce stuff. Qua, uh, qua de oufra. That's pretty fair, right? Sure. That's a good attempt. Uh, Yeah, I liked it. Um, I thought it was good. It's uh, first thing, just like you, I thought like the editing, I was like, man, I was like, they're doing some snappy stuff here. They're uh, really keeping me invested in this thing. Um, I also, uh, I did like the, the like sexual undertext, I guess, or even just the euphemisms. It's like you remember when that lady oh, came in and man. she was in her sexy clothes, and the guy, then the pot boils over, right. and he's like, "Ooh, baby, so, soaking panties and stuff." Like, yeah, not, wow, there's, yeah. There's that stuff. I was like, "Wow, this is uh, definitely not uh, an American pre-code? postcoder." Yeah, well, that that was what I or that one part too. She's like, "Oh man, I was <laughs> working so hard, my underpants are soaked," yeah. and he's like, "Let me see," and I was like, "Hey, when did Jared start acting in movies?" <laughs> Um, you know, the French, the French. Yeah. And it's not like the creepy kind of sexualism. Like uh, whenever we watch those Italian movies and it's like, get over here, woman. And they're always grabbing on them. Uh, That's going to sound like I'm generalizing the Italian people. But if you look at all the Criterion movies we've watched so far, there's a lot of Italian movies where they're just lusting after women in a very aggressive ways. So I like the way it was presented here. Mm -hmm. Uh, I it took me a while to pick up on those uh those uh woman relationship things that you you brought up. I didn't I didn't see it right away. Really? It was like it was a little well, yeah. I don't know if you know this, but I'm not the most observant guy. <laughs> so I was like watching and I was like, what's going on? And oh, then like so, later so, I was so like all those looks. Uh, I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. 
they're friends. <laughs> well, they are well, they are friends. They are friends. Yeah, it it did. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest. It took me a while though. I was, it was like near the end. I was like, "What's going on here?" And then I figured it out. Uh, I uh, I thought the use of mirrors was really cool. The way that they set all all that stuff up, like the alibi, like you said, that's awesome. I think the story itself is really interesting, neat, and fun. Uh, all those buzzwords that you hear about people use in the uh, cinematic reviews. Neat. Um, fun. Neat. Fun. You know, those big buzzwords that uh, people don't know what mean anymore. Uh, but I, I did like it. It's like I said, it's like kind of kind of goofy in in the way that like he shows up places and it's like he's already dead. And then he's like, I got to get out of here. And then his car gets stolen. And you're like, wow, wow. But it's played straight. So it's. It's yeah. not like goofy, and I, I like that. Um, and then I, it's like it's nice that the movie is. You think I guess going into it, you could think it was a noir film about a murder, but then the fact that it's not about that, it's like it's like hey, I w- I went to kill the guy, he was already dead, but now I still got to run away because I'm gonna get pinned for this. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. Uh, I like that. Uh, I really like the detective. Yeah. He's like he's such a nice guy. They're like, come on, and he's like, well, this ruins my night. He's the and good. Like, I mean, he's the good guy, but you're kind of like, yeah. I, I don't want him to win. You know, you want these guys yeah. to get away with it, even though they're kind of they're dolty, but yeah, they're, they're not killers either. Yeah, not killers, yeah. but like, I mean, the detective so so lovable in the sense he's like, look at my. Uh, Look at my son I got from the colonies. He's like, he's the only thing I brought back. Well, that and malaria. I Like when they said that, I was like, what? I was like, so does he have malaria or does the boy have malaria? Well, he got the malaria. He got the malaria? Yeah. No wonder he's coughing all the time. Uh, but I mean, they, they show him in like, I, I think this stuff with his son, I think is, it's like included in a really nice way that's not like too in your face but it's just enough in the background where it's this detail that's presented that kind of like humanizes him a little bit where he's like in the middle like in the midst of all this detective work he's like oh i got him now uh, and then the guy's like hey uh whatever his name is he's like come over here for a second he's like what's up he's like your son failed those exams and he's like god goddamn geometry yeah like, and god, then an erector set and everything yeah, and and then it like just moves on to the next scene, and you're like, oh okay. So it's like I think it shows that he had like he's a he's still a guy, and he's a parent, and he's got a life, but then he's also trying to crack the case, Jarrett. Mm-hmm. So I I really liked the inclusion of this son. I was like, that's a nice detail that they have in here for this guy. Makes sense. Good mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. Uh, what else I got here? I was going to say um, the the one thing that's good too is I like the people at the at the dance hall. Who are uh, all being very, very helpful by uh, telling the officer his alibi? And <laughs> We're then, just but, a family but, here. But, but that's like all that information is like it's all very like meaningful, but or it's like meaning to be helpful, but it actually winds up burying him more mm-hmm. because they're like, oh yeah, no, he didn't come by till this time. Um, yeah. But just so you know, he's a very good man. Oh yeah, you can leave right out the back door anytime. People just come and go. Yeah, he always does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that guy's always here, in and out, gone for hours at a time. He's the best. You would never know if anyone was here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I like that part too. That was really good. Uh, I also, um, I really liked the perverted old man. He just, mm. he reminded me of you a lot. Oh, yeah. And I was like, I get this guy. Like, he's always just like, it's cheaper than uh, doing other stuff stuff <laughs> oh i love it i really like the detail of when uh they sit down and get their photos taken when they're first being introduced or like yeah. that character and he like sits down with that girl and he like reaches over grabs her hand and just forces her hand onto his leg mm-hmm. it's like yep that's what yep. That's, that's the creeper move that's one of the moves that uh the creeps have uh you know patented patented creep move stop short that's what the that's what the patreon bucks pay for that's what the patreon bucks pay for legal fees uh yeah i like that old man uh i thought the slippers were fun have you ever seen slippers used in that way is that why they had that name where it's just like the soles of like old shoes and it's like just step on those and slip around so you don't have your dirty shoes on the floor yeah that's that's old world stuff i yeah i'm i'm sure that that's something a lot of people are familiar with but uh i don't know if i've ever seen that before and i thought it was neat Jarrett. neat and fun like those buzzwords 
Uh, I so the the stuff that loses you at the end with the um the robbery. I saw like there's a logical reason for it to come in uh where it's like it opens up or like kind of like closes on that guy's alibi a little bit more but then it does get they focus on it too much yes where it's just like takes over the last bit of the movie what i think would have been better is if they just brought it up where where they caught him with the guy's car and then it just it poked another hole in the guy's story and then they could have just used it more but i don't know i guess they they didn't need to like run the time out any longer because this movie is what an hour and forty seven minutes or so. Yep. Yeah, so they could have cut that out and that would have been ten minutes shorter and this thing would have just been like a crisp, just a crisp brown note. <laughs> a crisp brown note. <laughs> Do you know about those brown notes, Jarrett? Hmm. Do you know? I know about the brown note. You know about the brown note? Well, this is one of them. It w- well, it would have been if they had cut that stuff out. So I'm with you. Like, it didn't bug me that much. But at the same time, when I was watching it, I was like, eh, if this wasn't, it, they didn't need all of this. They yeah. could have cut that out a little bit. But yeah, it's it's not bad. I, I enjoyed watching it. It's not my favorite movie ever, but uh, it's definitely better than uh, some of the other shit we've been watching lately. <laughs> Do you think that there'll come a time when we watch a movie in the Criterion Collection, you'll go, this is one of my, this is my favorite movie ever? Uh, well, I mean, when are we going to watch Salo 2, uh, Back in the Habit? Uh, so I, I think that's like, probably going to be like episode 759. So it's a ways okay. away. It's a ways away. I don't know. I mean, any in my top 10, I was really blown away by. Like, Fishing with John is probably my favorite <laughs> movie of all time. But, uh, you know, that's just me. It's not and even I, a movie. And it's not even a movie. That's why, and that's the irony of it, Jared. That's the fun, neat part about me saying that. Neat. It's very neat. Uh, no, it's good. It's a good show. This uh, coup de oof. Um, <laughs> coup de oof. For, it's, it's based or on a book. Uh, it was based on a book that. Uh, oh, okay. That uh, Kuzo got a the rights book? to. Uh, I probably know it, but he got the okay. rights, and then uh, he didn't. I guess copies were hard to get because this is again, this is that post-war France. Uh, yeah. getting things done pretty tricksy but uh, yeah. by the time he got a copy uh, him and his partner had already written the screenplay they <laughs> just they winged it that's why it apparently it resembles the novel in like no way so yeah. that's always good well, we wing it all the time very true very true I don't even know uh, what movies are what, what's a movie exactly exactly I don't know is there any other uh, cool things about books and no. clu- uh, detective Clouseau's no, uh, I mean one day we'll talk about uh, Le Carbo, Clouseau's other movie, uh, which apparently kind of ended his career for a little while. I don't know that one. Well, we'll, we'll get there. It's okay. out. Of, it's also out of print, but I think someone's putting it out. We'll get there yeah. someday over the rainbow. Uh, you want to hear about some people who hate this movie? Is there like how many people have even watched? It's the exact movie? same thing. Where like our lowest ratings are like two stars. Yeah. Okay. Because it's like, again, like a movie that has like 500 people watching it. Sure. It's not on people's lips. It's kind of a, it's a minor, I, I would consider it a minor Clouseau movie. I mean, even like, I mean, I I kind of, I think I like the good parts of this more than I like Le Da Biolique. Mm. I would you say. were kind of, you were kind of warm on that movie though. Or cool. Cool. Lukewarm. But, because Wages of Fierce, so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. When you when you said uh, lips, all I could think of this movie's kind of like a second on the lips, forever on the hips. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, Jared? That's, that's right, Al. You know, you know what I mean, Vern? Okay, tell me about people who hate this movie. I all guess. All right, here. If you want to? Oh my God, I can barely even read what these words are. Two stars from. Endone. Maybe. N d o a n e endone. Oh my god! They're the only two star review. It's got to okay. be them. It's probably that one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the director has been called the French Hitchcock. What? By who? <laughs> some people. But this, okay, yeah, this sure. movie. Whatever. Some good bits and some bad bits. Certainly okay. not the masterpiece that has been described as. What? By who? By who? The plot ended up being happenstance and fairly bland. I wasn't that into the whole investigation that took up most of the second half. I did like personal interactions and how the characters tried to react to plot points. Try to react. I also enjoyed everything about the Dora character. I wish that there was more of her and that she had played a bigger role in the story. 
Same. Dora was cool. Yep. I wish I saw more Dora too. Yeah, uh, yeah. That that actress though too. Uh, she had incredible hair. That blonde hair of oh. hers, the way they did it up, it's like, man, that's oh. awesome. That's what movies are for. Jarrett. Oh my god, you're giving away too much of your uh, peculiar interests <laughs> over there. Well, I don't know. Just like it's like, look at that, look at that hair. Yeah, I thought she was a striking woman, also. Jared. Yeah, and she had like that. Uh, her uh, the photo studio embroidered logo on it. It's like mm. so so. Oh, look at who made that mm. is. Was that that guy's whole review? Yep, that's it. Her person. Yep. They just gave a uh, four hundred blows one star. Oh shit! You're, you sound like your friends. Well, yeah, but then they also gave Jesus Christ Superstar one star, which uh, I'm not on board with. That movie's an all star, all time banger, Jared. All time banger. They have really strange five star movies. Most of them are just John Cusack movies. Like I don't know. Do <sighs> like you think Gross Point dead. Blank? Yeah, like Gross Point Blank, uh, John Cusack, Man, Frozen Ground Lover. with Nicolas Cage. Uh, that one's not in there, Damn. but uh, I don't. They gave Super Trooper five stars, but Slam and Salmon one star. Ice Harvest also with John Cusack five stars. What? Uh, you know, you know what I mean, Jared. I, this person I'm, hasn't watched a ton of movies though. Okay. Or haven't rated a ton of movies, I should say. And yet they've seen this movie. And yet they've seen. Well, they have. Okay, I should. Oh. Wait, okay, I should rephrase that completely. They have 2,000 ratings, but only 54 five-star ratings and only 60 one-star ratings. So the majority of their ratings are for four-star movies. Uh, It's garbage. Yeah, it's garbage. It's all garbage. Uh, One more here. Luke Robinson, two and a half stars. Clouseau, it seems, favors procedure over plot in his suspension films. The mystery at the center of his murder movies is not who done it, but who is going to find out, leaving us to watch as characters slowly catch up with truths we don't just see coming, but see happening in the opening of the movie. This is a novel approach, similar in its way to Hitchcock's notion of the bomb. But here, it didn't work for me half as well as it does in his other films. The constant frittering of the French police felt like wheel spinning, like we were waiting an hour for any new information rather than opening up space for the characters as it usually does. I wouldn't disagree with that. The yeah. carnival setting, detective character, and conclusion make it worthwhile, but far from HG's best work. HG who? Clouseau? Henry... Uh... Yeah. Geron? George. Henry George. Henry George? H- H- HG himself. Hmm. So uh, this Luke Robinson individual has, um, they've seen a lot of movies, but they don't rate. Uh, their fives and ones are a little bit skimp. Five star films include The Conversation, The Apartment, Peeping Tom, Taxi Driver, Her, and there's like five more. That's it. Those are all sad uh, bastard he- movies. Yeah, they're all sad bastard movies. Here's some one-star films, though, Jarrett. They only have, like, eight. Uh, A Wrinkle in Time, that new movie that just came out. The Cobbler with Adam Sandler, which Uh is a movie that I watched, which wasn't bad. The New Hellboy. Boy, that's a minority view. Well, I gave it two stars. It's not great. It's just... Uh, anyways, they gave the new Hellboy half a star, and then they gave What Men Want half a star, which, do you know about What Men Want, Jarrett? Yeah. So that's the remake Reverse, of, what, yeah. Yeah, of What Women Want with uh, Taraji Henson. Guess what? My wife, my <laughs> wife watched that movie last night, and you know what she said? She said, it wasn't bad. <laughs> she said, it wasn't bad. And I said, okay, baby, whatever you say, whatever you say, toots. And then I, I gave her a a high five. Yeah. Not a punch, as it looked like in Jarrett's view. Yep. High five. Yep. Do you have any last thoughts on this <clears throat> fine film? Okay, here's some... Oh, no, wait. That's nope. not weird at all. Never mind. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm, uh, I mean, I'm fine. I thought it was fine. Yeah. Whatever. Dece. Yeah, it's good. Yep. Good stuff. After the break... We're going to work on our alibis. We're recording a podcast the entire time. Allegedly. Allegedly. 